Hello everyone, welcome to the channel of AlgoCamp. So now on this particular channel, we are actually releasing a series on data structures and algorithms where we are going to talk about some of the most important data structures and algorithmic topics which are extremely, extremely important for your upcoming software engineering interviews. Apart from that, these are some of the, uh, I would say, topics that are very, very helpful in your day-to-day -day engineering job as well. We have already released a couple of series around searching, right? And we got a really good response on that. And from here, we are going to put really some awesome content around DSA. In most of these lectures, we will try to ensure that we focus on the intuition building aspect of the things that how you are able to think about something, what are some of the things that people actually neglect but are going to clear some of the really important fundamentals. We are going to see coding implementation, but trust me, my focus is not going to be on the language delivery aspect of the things that, okay, you have to code this in C++ or Java. A lot of problems we have coded in multiple languages. Maybe some of the problems will be in C++, some will be only in JavaScript. I believe if you are somebody who is preparing for an interview, language in 2025 should not be a constraint because most of the people can actually use ChatGPT to do language conversions. So my motive here is to make sure that you understand the concept in depth. You actually see how exactly somebody might have thought about the problem when they were carving out the problem, what can be some initial thought process, how you can actually drive yourself towards the solution. I believe these are going to be some really important videos that will be really helpful for your upcoming career. So do let us know what is your feedback. Um, we are going to release a lot of more topics. Do let us know what all topics you want to have first, right? And uh, the feedback is going to be important. Also, in case you are actually thinking to level up, you want to learn things with respect to low level design, high level design, overall system design for interviews, or you are somebody who wants to do project development in Spring Boot, you want to learn advanced Spring Boot concepts, or let's say advanced Node.js concepts, then we have a lot of courses, live courses running on algocamp.io. So you can check out the website courses.algocamp.io slash learn. And there are a lot of courses that are actually listed. A lot of great discounts are actually going on all, all the courses as well. Do check them out for each and every single course. We are going to add you to a dedicated Discord community where you can get your doubts resolved as well. All of the courses we have made sure that we talk about things from the very beginner to the very advanced level that is going to help you level up in your career as a software engineer. So that being said, let's start the video without any further delay. So today we are going to start the discussion on something called as sorting. Now, if you have been involved in programming for quite some time, then you might have heard about this word sorting, right? But to be very honest, sorting as a term is very less understood in the overall computer science community. If you will go to your college or let's say if you will go to your department and you will ask, let's say 10 students that what do you mean by sorting? Then I can bet you on the fact that 50% of the people are going to give you wrong definition. You will hear definitions like when you will ask what is sorting, they will say arranging order in, in arranging data in increasing order is sorting. But technically that is not what sorting is, right? And trust me on this, at least 50% of the people are going to say this and that's an absolutely bizarre and a wrong statement to give for the term sorting. So what is sorting? What actually is meant by sorting? So. There is a term that you might have heard in your elementary mathematics called as permutations. Right. What is permutations? Permutations are just arrangements. Right. Let's say you have a given set of data and you are going to arrange that set of data in some particular order. You are going to arrange in all possible arrangements that are actually called as permutation. And from this term permutation only, we get the definition of the word sorting. So what is sorting? Arranging data in a particular permutation, particular permutation. And what permutation? This depends on this depends on requirement. Right. So arranging data in particular permutation is called as sorting. Is called as sorting. Right. You might have seen 
different web applications for example amazon flipkart right when you go and shop on amazon or flipkart you can sort the data by price you can sort the data by rating now that sorting can be done in increasing order of the price or decreasing order of the price or maybe you can club both the price as well as the rating and then give you some uh, sorted results right so you have already seen sorting in action sorting as a operation you have already seen in action and you can just directly justify the fact that yes it is not always going to be an increasing order but this is a wrong notion that goes around that sorting means arranging something in increasing order no sorting means arranging data in some particular order in some particular permutation if you arrange your data that is sorting now that arrangement or that permutation can be increasing order decreasing order or maybe something else maybe something else maybe you want to arrange them in zigzag order increasing decreasing increasing decreasing something like that that is also kind of like sorting right so that is what the meaning of sorting is and to be very honest sorting is one of the most important problems in computer science because i just said right if you go to applications like flipkart amazon you see sorting there any e-commerce you go mintra you can see sorting there right if you go to your let's say music player applications like amazon music spotify apple music you can sort your songs based on their let's say ratings or demands or something like that let's say you want to sort the song based on most played songs these kind of sortings are available there also you can arrange your playlist according to you right you can create an arrangement of yourself in your playlist so this problem of arrangements of this problem of permutations is very important and that's why we are going to learn a lot of sorting algorithms that will make sense based on what problem do we have these sorting algorithms are going to make sense and we will understand the nuances behind these sorting algorithms we are going to understand what is the basic technique behind these sorting algorithms and so on so i hope the overall definition of what sorting is is clear to everyone So before moving forward in the video, I would like to talk about the new system design 2.0 cohort that we have recently launched. If you are somebody who is actually willing to apply for a lot of product based companies and you are technically confused on where to actually prepare for low level design, high level design and machine coding rounds, then you are actually at the right place. In the new system design cohort, we are going to actually include all the relevant concepts around high level design, low level design, machine coding and this time we have kept it kind of like bigger and better. This time we have specifically added a lot of company specific interview problems solving both in HLD and LLD. We have added interesting concepts around distributed system like Lampot clock, vector clock, consensus algorithms and whatnot. The complete curriculum of this system design 2.0 cohort is mentioned in the link in the description section below. You can use this coupon code coming on your screen to get massive discounts altogether. There is a dedicated video on the channel where you can find all the details regarding the course syllabus. But what I can assure you is based on my experience working as a software engineer and all of the interviews that I have given, this is going to be a very comprehensive course where we are going to talk about all the relevant things that is going to be necessary, not just for you to crack software engineer interviews, but also work as a software engineer. So, do check out all the links in the description section below. Uh, all the course syllabus, all the dates, everything necessary is already mentioned there. So now let's come back to the video. So now in order to understand sorting, there are a lot of terminologies that you need to understand sorting algorithms, right? But I just don't want to go into those terminologies, right? I feel that if you see a sorting algorithm in action, then you will get more feeling, then you will get more excited about the topic. And then only we will be able to understand things better. So let's try to take a problem statement in hand. Then we will try to figure out an algorithm. Now based on that algorithm, we will try to form some terminologies and everything. Okay. Cool. So let's see. Let's say given n integer values given n integer values, arrange them in increasing order. Okay. So here you can see that 
I have specified the arrangement. I mentioned specifically that I want an arrangement of increasing order. Now, if somebody else asks you this question, then they can ask for maybe decreasing order or something like that. Right? So, that is why we say that you are given n integer values and you have to arrange them in increasing order. For example, 15 minus 1, 3, 8, 2, 6. Let's say this is the given set of elements. Let's say you will be given this in the form of an array. These n integers will be given to you in the form of an array. And now you have to figure out an algorithm using which you can arrange this array in increasing order. Now you tell me, if I talk about a brute force solution, brute force means what do we mean by brute force? Brute force means the worst possible solution, like no smartness, no logic, the worst possible solution that we can think of. I would say, what will be the brute force or the worst, worst possible solution if you will go and ask some people, no? Like this is also a very wrong myth that goes in the industry. Like again, you pick any 10 persons and ask this question that what is the worst way of doing a sorting or arranging elements in increasing order, a lot of people will answer you something called as bubble sort. We will learn about bubble sort. Some people will answer you things like bubble sort or maybe selection sort. Some people will say that. If anyone is saying that the worst possible algorithm to arrange elements in a particular order is bubble sort, stop talking to them. Okay. Just know one thing that they know nothing. Okay. So we will talk about what will be the worst possible solution in order to arrange the elements in increasing order, right? Just think about it. What, I, what did I tell you? What is arrangement? Arrangement means permutations, right? Arrangement means permutations. So how about, how about without putting much brain, without putting much brain, what we can do is we can generate all possible permutations right just generate all possible permutations right if there are n elements and i'm considering for the time being for sake of simplicity that all the n elements are unique then for n elements there are n factorial permutations can i say that right so what you can do, you can generate all possible permutations. For example, if you have three elements, 3, 2, 1, what will be all the possible permutations? 3, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2. This will be all the possible permutations. Can I say that? Just generate all the possible permutations and filter out your required one. Right. Just filter out whatever you require. So generate all of them and then one by one see. Does this satisfy the condition of increasing order? No. Does this satisfy the condition of increasing order? No. Does this satisfy? No. This one doesn't satisfy but this permutation satisfies the increasing order. That means this is our required permutation and hence we will be able to arrange the element in increasing order and whatever order. Maybe somebody asked you for decreasing order or some custom order. The thing is, the total possible orders are only these six. For these three elements, only these six possible orders are possible. So, whenever somebody asks you a question, they are going to ask from one of these six possible orders. So, just generate all possible permutations or all possible orders and filter out whatever you require. Can I say that? This is going to be the worst possible solution. Why worst possible solution? Because if there are n elements, there are n factorial permutations. Just think about it. If for some time I consider that you require k unit, order of k unit to generate one permutation, then to generate n factorial permutation you will require order of k into n factorial and n factorial is one of the fastest growing, I would say, function with respect to the other functions which are linear, quadratic and everything. So order of k n factorial is going to be equivalent to order of n factorial only. So you will at least require somewhere around order of n factorial to arrange all the possible permutations. 
and the other algorithm that uh, the that the people will answer you the, regarding bubble sort and selection sort all of them runs faster than this right that is why this is the worst possible solution that you can give for a sorting algorithm right now you might be thinking how to generate this you can very easily generate it using recursion we can maybe discuss it about it later also no problem on that but my point being that you have to just generate all possible permutations filter out your permutation and that's it and it, this whole algorithm is going to take approximately somewhere around order of n factorial to generate permutation there is a backtracking based solution that we will be learning later no worries on that part but this is the answer if somebody asks you the brute force solution for the problem of sorting so now we know that what's the worst possible algorithm to generate all possible permutations if that's the case then how can we optimize it because definitely n factorial is extremely high right so there are a lot of algorithms not one not two not three but there are a lot of algorithms that can optimize this problem some of the algorithms that we will be learning through in this series is going to be bubble sort it one is going to be selection sort we will be learning insertion sort we will learn counting sort there is an algorithm very famous very important merge sort there is quick sort there are a few more sorting algorithms radix sort bucket sort those are not that important but still we might just skim through them right so we are going to learn a lot of sorting algorithms and there is no set solution to the problem of sorting because depending on the situation what do you want to do there are different algorithms that you can use some people will say that bubble sort is the worst first of all bubble sort is not the worst you know the worst algorithm but if somebody some people just compare bubble sort and selection sort then there will be cases where selection sort will be far more superior than bubble sort but if you just see both of them with respect to the worst case time complexity then the worst case time complexity is going to be same but still some point of time bubble sort is going to be superior some point of time selection sort is superior some point of time merge sort is superior and so on so we'll discuss all of the cases we will be learning all of these sorting algorithms one by one and we will get the hang of what actually is the algorithm where it is used how to code it and so on 